This episode is brought to you by Andreas Hamm. I'm Mark Estale. I'm a voice director for video games. And I've founded OM UK, which is a company here in London. And I also design studios and tech for uh, working with games. Fundamentally, the voice director's job is to bring the characters to life, give them a voice, and to make them alive in the game world. So anything that you hear that's spoken in the game, the voice director is the one who uh, creates that. They don't act it, but they, they cast and record. When I got into games, well, the thing is, I was really influenced by um, the early LucasArts, you know, the adventure games, you know, the full, the full throttle, the Day of the Tentacle, all that kind of stuff, it just like Manic Mansions. I loved it, and the standards in there were really high. And I, and I fell in love with the industry and came in to kind of by a back door as a studio consultant. When I first started, people didn't get it. You know, when I thought LucasArts, they set a standard which was amazing. I played those games, loved them. And when I first started working in the industry, I thought everybody was on board. And it was so far from the truth. You know, um, when I, you know, it took me four years of pushing for bringing sort of professional values, you know, production values. I'd worked in telly, my, one of my colleagues at the time was just like a, a, a Palm Door nominated film director. You know, we had a pedigree of production behind us. And game developers just looked at us as if, as if we were idiots. You know, they, um, they, they, you know, they said, why? Why do we want actors? Why do we want this kind of stuff? And it took four years before um, one of the developers actually agreed to do a casting. And that was, you know, that was a big party day. And then within the, with the same year, um, it, it, the kind of doors opened. That was like early 2000s. So 2001, 2002 was when I think people went, voice is important. So before that, you know, they'd say, we can talk. Why do we need voices, you know, voice actors? I think that's a, it's a really difficult one. It is just, if you're writing a drama, um, it's all about the writing. It's much, you know, with games, you're, you're dealing with a compromise in a sense of what the purpose of the writing is. It's, it's um, you're educating the player, you're helping the player, you're giving information as well as telling a story. So, um, there's two elements really, you know, you could say, yes, bad writing, of course bad act writing leads to bad acting, and it's an intention to detail. Fundamentally, you can't polish a dirt, so if there's bad writing, you can't do anything with it, so you're going to get bad acting from it. It just doesn't work. You know, the acting may be great, in fact, but if the words don't make sense or they're just wrong, it comes across wrong. It's the audience experience that counts. So. The other factor that really um, makes a difference in performance is um, the actor's understanding of context of what's going on. And because of the complexity of game scripts, it's oftentimes very hard to keep on top of what the exact context is. There's loads of the three main factors. Context, um, context um, writing is important but it's not everything. Context is massively important. And um, complexity of what's going on. So, you know, any performance is dependent on what's happened before, what's happening in the moment, what's happening after, the space the actor's in. Yeah, so what, what breaks a performance? It's a really tough question because I don't like answering it. You know, because there are so many different factors. And actors get a real um, tough rap you know, you know, oh, you can't act. You know, I've had, I've had one um, producer say, why the fuck did you get that actor into the studio? He can't act. And it was just like, uh, do you know who that guy is? And do you know his pedigree? You know, he's, you know, he's on stage at the Royal Shakespeare Company and he's, you know, he's the top of his game. And maybe 
it may be something to do with your script and it may be something to the way to the way to do with the way you're communicating with him um you know uh so it's there's all sorts of factors that can you know influence performance and the toughest thing is about in a game world you don't have the game world um around you generally when you're recording so the performance is down to the director and the actor uh, communicating what's actually going on. And if a scene's been approached from different angles, for some of those angles, it may be, uh, it may be wrong, it may not work. And you need to have all your bases covered. Um, and if vocal performance exists in time and space. And when you're actually creating a game, you don't have time and space. You're in, you're in a recording studio. So, you know, you get the subtle sort of performances on motion capture stage because it's a complete setup. It's set up like a, you know, like a theatre or, or a film set. You know exactly where you're going, you know all the movements, everything's rehearsed and planned. Uh, that's a very expensive process. And a lot of developers don't have those kind of budgets. They don't have the, the, the kind of writing skill or the directing skill uh, or the time to do that. So they're kind of rushing it and they're compromising. So, um, yeah, you may see bad acting in games, but it, it might not be the writing. It might be the context. It might be the direction. Um, you don't know, you know. Oftentimes it's not bad acting, you know. It's just wrongly directed acting or, yeah, possibly a clunky script or two. I guess a kind of philosophical question really about acting and about you know, where, where truthful performance um, hinges. And um, I think the fundamental thing of working with an actor is about truth is always in the moment, so in the now. So if an actor comes in and they've come off stage, they will be, um, they, you know, they, they know about acting, they know about character, they know about the moment. Um, they may be completely confused and daunted about the script, but if you if you can immerse them into the moment, they don't need to be focused on the complexity of the script. So it's actually the most important thing for the actors to just relax and take it moment by moment. You know, they're used to rehearsing and preparing um, and knowing everything that happens. So the thing we focus on, or what I focus on as a director, is the actor feeling comfortable inside the skin of the character, then introducing the character into the game world, which is a completely different approach, but it's actually a much more natural approach. It's like walking out onto the street. You don't know what's going to happen on the street. Things happen. You respond to them. And if the actor enters into the studio with that kind of um, attitude of, just entering into a journey, they get it and they, they come alive in that world, you know. So everything, every turn of the page, well, line on screen, um, introduces them to something new. So then they just do it and it's either right or wrong. And, you know, we may, you know, hit a line or a, a scene a couple of different ways, but it's a fluid motion rather than you know, a preparation, a rehearsal and doing it. We're just getting the actor to come into the space, relax. They know about character. A good actor knows how to enter into a character. And that is the most important thing to work with them on. Then you just take them on a journey. And it's, once they see the studio as a space where they, they play and enter, enter, they're entering a world and just responding in that world rather than prepar preparing a script. Line reading to an actor is a bit like hiring a really amazing artist, then getting them to join the dots. You know, it's wrong. You know, what you want is somebody to bring their magic. You hire an actor because they bring magic to a moment. And if you line read to them, you're just putting them in a box of your imagination, not into a space of their craft. Oh, do you want a puppet? Um, yeah, you don't line read uh, to an actor simply because it's, it's unnatural. You know, what's the most important thing is why is somebody saying a line? You know, what is the motivation? What are, why am I saying this? 
You know, if you can't, if they don't understand why they're saying it, it's got no depth to it. You know, we have we have a, a really fabulous actor who come who who I've had in the studio, um, who the the director came in and was um, line reading to him, and and he was just mimicking the director back to him, and he said the director was going, no, I want it like this, and so he absolutely copied what the director was saying to him back to him, and the, the director was going, no, 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 and he just turned and said, well that's what you just said to me, you know. And he was at the point of just walking out of the session, you know, because it was just like, you know, he obviously can do it. You know, why have you got me here? You know, and it was just like, and he had a complete huff and the director was really, really embarrassed. And he was saying, what you need to find is the actual, the movement in the, why the, the, the why is he saying that line? You know, imagine it, you know. Um, if you're in a hurry, think about something that's going to um, evoke that pace to it. You know, imagine you're talking to somebody and you need to go to the toilet and you need to get out of the room really quick. That will give you the, you know what I mean? It's an example of, of getting the, the, the right level of performance. So it actually comes from within rather than dumped on the sound. Anybody can be a puppet and copy, but then you just get a really stiff disjointed performance and you want something that's going to flow and be real. So, you know, acting is action, it's doing. You know, it's not about saying stuff, it's about objective. So all you need to do is put the carrot and the stick, in a sense, you know, before and behind the actor and you get the right um, performance out of it. Yeah, yeah. More and more so, and trying to get in as early as you can with them because there are so many different aspects to a script. And um, yeah, as I was saying earlier, but I'll repeat, it's the the ad ad developers have different levels of skill and awareness. So they may be technically brilliant at gameplay, but they may not be creatively brilliant at writing or at character development or um, storytelling, yeah. So it's, we can come, you know, so we try to get close to them as early as possible to find out what their strengths and weaknesses are and where they, you know, may need input. You know, sometimes they've got it all completely sussed out and they just want the session to be facilitated. And so but basically we are there very much at the last minute uh, when they need us to just facilitate the recording and doing that. But um, more often than not, we're getting very involved um, from very early on in development, sometimes you know, way pre-alpha or even at concept stage, where they're actually trying to work out um, you know, budget schedule, what's important, how to improve their pipelines, how to improve the quality of their production process. So, and that's really interesting um, because there's a lot about uh, voice that they just don't think about. You know, they don't think about sort of character development. They don't think about how the player's going to engage with the character, you know, whether it's important. You know, a lot of games just do character angry, you know, and that's the sole emotion in the game. And you wonder why the player's getting a two dimensional you know, experience, you know, there's humour and romance and all those kind of things you could actually bring in if you thought about it, you know. So it's, it's asking questions really. We go in, I want to know, I want to really get inside the psyche of the, the developer um, from day one. You know, so when they start talking to us about doing a game, I want to know what they want, I want to know what their skills are, I want to know where their passions lie and see how we can complement that. Um, that's really important. And the more we can do that, the better. So, I, you know, there's some, some of the games I'm working on now, you know, we're two years off really going into development. They're just concepts. They may come and they may, they may disappear, but it's, it's just really nice getting close to that creative team and finding out, you know, what 
you can bring and you know why they want you there and and just getting getting your hands dirty and the creative side is uh, is I think really important because then you can get in and bring out subtlety you don't have to uh, just go out there and hammer in the nails that oh, are needed you know you can craft a bit of the woods as well so yeah I'm we are, I'm very actor centric because a great actor is a magical beast it's like a racehorse it's they are like racehorses you know they they have some they have wonderful abilities and you know sensitivity and awareness of human nature which can explode a script you can give a mediocre, mediocre script to a great actor and they will do things with it you would never dream dream of and that's personally what i like about um the work i do um, and i don't approach it as i get an actor to do a job i bring the actor in to bring their talent to the moment um, so it's actually giving them as much creative um, scope or space to actually breathe into the character their interpretation within the constraints of what is needed within this within the story so um, one of the things we do is we do a lot of script re rewriting with the actor in the studio but it's the environment we're working in enables that to happen because the whole studio for us is a very flexible creative space so it's like a melting pot you know we're not going in and very very disciplined this is what you're doing and going from a to b it's not like a motion capture suit where you're actually really fine tuning something in rehearsal you're actually getting in down and dirty with the with the script as you're creating the uh, the character and recording it so if we get in with the developer early and uh, we can get the actor we get the roles cast as early as possible so i think you know if we we'd like to do it when they're at concept stage so so they say you know we want to to have this middle-aged villain yeah so what does he sound like what does he look like if those things are still up in the air then it's it's really neat um, if you can cast the character, you get a good actor who fills that space. It actually fills the imagination of the creative team. So the whole creative team, um, if they buy into a performance or a performer, they all buy into a vision of him. So it influences the writing, it influences the way the character moves, it influences the way the character looks, and it becomes a much more organic um, process so you know we advocate and advocate cast really early so the team know the actor they've bought into the actor they've done all the negotiation you know the worst thing you can do is like cast really late in a production because you've got a whole team of work you might be 300 400 people working on a game and if that guy doesn't have a voice guess what you've got 300 different imaginations you know imagining what that character is going to sound like so they're you know they're pulling in different directions somebody go and say oh yeah it's bruce william willis in a movie or something you know he's a bit like this in this movie but then everybody else has got a everybody's got a different view of that person in the movie you know somebody might think about the you know the physical attributes and often that's one of the things that does happen when you see an actor in a movie they don't think about the sound it's the physical presence presence of the performance which gives the strength of the performance not the voice you know one of the classics that always has been is um sigourney weaver an alien you know if you listen to her she just sounds like somebody's mum yeah but she's kick-ass in that movie and they want you know you see it oh, i want this actor you know this character to be a bit like sigourney weaver in alien you go you want it to sound like your mum you know it's about a physical presence you know so it's a different thing you know they're not picking up on actually the sound it's the experience they're picking up on and everybody experiences things differently so if you can cast early then you 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 generally get a a consensus within the team and they're all working and actually you get this uh is it congruence you know of 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 everything coming together and it's 
that's magical. If you can do that, you know, you're going to get much richer characters because you can get the subtlety, you can get the real tiny conflicts and humour, you know, pulling through. Well, it depends on the you know on your budget. You know, if you've got a, um, if you have millions to play with, you can do the whole title. But remember, games can be a few, just a few words, to you know now into millions of words. So you know, if you're recording a million words in a motion capture studio, you have many millions of pounds of budget, and it's probably not the most efficient way of doing it. Um, but the games industry is changing. So your AAAs, where you're going for that sort of cinematic reality, um, and are using it more and more. It's all staged. You know, you, they know they're going to get that sort of level of subtlety of performance. But then you get, you know, if you look at some titles, you'll get this amazing cutscenes and set pieces. Then you go into NPC number 432, and it's hi, I'm Wood, you know, I don't know where I am. And it's just like, and that makes it even more jarring. You know, if it was Wood all the way through, the player would be enjoying the game and have, would have just abdicated their connection with any character. Um, and it's like, you know, the, a game is as strong as the smallest, you know, the tiniest NPC. Any, you know, just get it wrong and it's kicked out. So, you know, you've either got to raise the bar throughout the whole production or um, not at all, you know. But as far as quantity goes, I think it, it will get more and more because of the technology, like I showed you downstairs, is getting cheaper and cheaper and it's getting faster and faster to do. So it's becoming more accessible to get full performance capture or you know, facial capture and stuff like that. So you're going to get more subtle performances because of the access to technology. Um, however, the games industry is just growing exponentially right now. You know, everybody and their dog can make a game. And there are some amazing creative minds with no budget, and they could never ever afford, um, you know, that kind of tech. So you know, we work right across the board. We do a lot of indie titles as well as you know your AAA. So it's and it's really interesting. And the th the thing, the thing is, the audience doesn't discern budget; they just discern experience. So. The, you know, the people who are not using that tech have got, got to come up to the bar that that tech sets. You know, The Last of Us, there was some phenomenal, it's just breathtaking, it's going, yeah, but everybody's got to come up to the bar because that's what people will judge performance against. I love that, you know, because always pushing those boundaries. But those are the guys with the big pockets and the really fantastic teams who know their, they know their stuff and it shows. But that's the standard everybody else has got to come up to. Because, you know, my son, when he picks up a game, he goes, oh, Last of Us is great, but that, shit. And actually, it's not shit, it's just very different, you know. It's right across the board, really. And I think people are just learning to um, get motion capture really well. You know, there's a lot of motion capture that is absolutely rubbish. You know, because, oh, it's motion capture, so, you know, you've got this kind of jester talking, you know, which is wrong. You know, it needs to be subtle. You know, but there are now fantastic craftsmen of motion capture. And understanding that, it's just a, it's a mindset. Um, it's, it's the same, I think, from, you know, when we're casting. You know what job an actor's done before when they come in for a casting because if they've come off a film set, they're, you know, they're mumbling, they're talking quietly. It's all about what's going on in here. And if they're coming off a radio drama, it's slightly different because it's, it, the, the voice carries everything. And if they come off stage, they're performing to the you know, to the gods. And it's, all it is is an adjustment. So I think, yeah, there's been some really, it's, it's becoming an art form in itself. And it is an art form because it is really connected performance. 
Um, but it's, I think it's more like a, you know, like a cinema performance. It's, it's like working on a film set. And if you can treat motion capture as a film performance, then you're entering the right kind of space. You know, we got, we've looked at, um, you know, some titles where they've used acrobats and, and physical performers um, to do the motion. Then they've, they've dubbed it with a voice actor. But oftentimes those physical performances, unless it's sport orientated and it's acrobatic in nature, if it's um, normal performance, some of those performances are just horribly, horribly horrible. You know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. And I think is, you know, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Gollum. Andy Serkis, you know, you know, Andy Serkis is a phenomenal actor, and he, know, you know, the, what what he's doing at Imaginarium, he, you know, and he, his training and his education, and um, his approach, is fantastic because he understands acting, the subtlety of movement, and pre-planning it and rehearsing and you know being really precise about it. And it is down to the minutiae of, of, of movement that makes the difference. You know, and understanding that rather than going, oh, latest tech, let's, let's move because we can get real people to move and therefore it looks real. You know, everybody would be like, Tony Blair. You know, it's just like, no. Let's talk with our hands. You know, it's just like, yeah, you get, it's like me in front of a camera. It's, it's that same thing. You go, oh my God, my motion's being captured. Therefore, you become aware of all your motion. And actually, at performance, you're never aware of your motion. You are being. And it's actually getting to that state of being. So to answer your question, yes, some actors are going to be lost. But it's just a matter of immersion, you know, and training and good coaching. You know, when you've got a developer who doesn't really know it, and the actor doesn't really know it, you're gonna get shit. You know, when you've got a when you've got a wizard who really understands it, directing the show, he'll bring the the actor into the right space to produce it. So. One of the really interesting things I always found about uh, voice recording has always been the ratio between the number of words an actor speaks and the number of words a director speaks. And often when you're crafting something without context, you're, there, there could be a, um, a ratio of 10 to 1 of director words to actor words. So the actor is completely in the hands of the director to bring them into the right space. And it's down to the ability of the director to craft that, and that's what a really good director can do. Um, about 10 years ago, I posed the question really, what it would be like if the actor was actually in the game? How would they respond? Um, and, and, and that question started a, a journey of, um, creating what we call is game immersive voice recording where the studio is becomes a film set so the actor is actually entering into the game world because they have all the visual and audio assets there for them to to give them context to their performance so the director can actually shut up bring the actor into the world and just let the magic happen. And I think, you know, that's been my baby for the last, yeah, 10 years I've been working on it properly. Um, and the studio here, which we first adapted seven years ago, um, was our first experiment into it. And the new studio, the new studios are seeing it come into full fruition. And it's basically supported by tools and tech which is the foundation, your pipelines and the asset management, all that kind of, those kind of dirty words which some creative people hate, like being organized and absolutely meticulous in, in pre-production, are those are the things that really empower fluid um, 
creation, you know. So with, with game immersive recording, you're actually seeing what you're going to get in game at the very point of creation. You know what it's going to sound like in context. You're in context. So that is um, something I think which will be adapted or adopted is the right word, um, more and more by other studios and the developers. You know, because we talk, I go out and talk about um, immersive recording all the time and try to get, because it's actually, it's a no-brainer. If you've got context, you're going to get the right performance. If you're not doing it on a motion capture stage, how are you going to do it? And actually, you've got the assets, so it's, it's a short pass from having the assets to giving them to the actor. And that's all we're... Um, all we're doing really and actually when the when, when the actors come into the studio and developers come into the studio and see all their assets working to produce uh, an environment that is contextually rich they go they love it you know and it's a really special thing and I'm very proud of it shall I show you some of this stuff then I just want to I just want to yeah it was t I was talking about the whole thing about getting um, how do you get that really sort of subtle, connected, believable performance in, in games. And it's, you know, you can go down the sort of, if you've got the budget, you can go down the sort of traditional route and use, when I say traditional, it's, just, um, you know, like things like motion capture and the, the sound stage. But it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. So how does the, the, the regular developer who don't have those deep pockets do it? And it's just like that, what I was saying about immersing to immerse the the play the actor into the game uh, works, but you need a certain skill level with the actor. So they need to be what I would say at the top of their game. They, they really need to be have all the instincts and comfortability and be able to play and to move very quickly, because all we do is take them and drop them into the game world. So their reactions are very become very natural to the character. So you know. So the the thing I've been my baby, I think, ever since I started, was how do I do it? And, you know, it's like I've worked with so many different directors and different productions, and there's a ratio between the words the director says and the words the actor says. And the late, the, the, because generally a script is just an Excel sheet, then the director or the designer or the writer is explaining all the time to the actor. So it becomes this sort of minute focus performance where every line is, yes, that's right. And the actor just waits till the team have decided their performance is right and they move on. It's not really about, you know, it's a, it's a form of acting. They do it in a lot of animation. They do it a lot of it in games. But it's this stop-go thing that is completely controlled by the information that's given them. So, you know, the, the director will go, OK, let's take that again. Um, OK, um, emphasis, that word, you know. And sometimes they'll give them, you know, line readings. And then the actor is just a sort of, in a sense, a dumb puppet who's just got the right sound for the character. And they are then completely moulded by the director. And they say that's sometimes, you know, when you do, um, um, things like Wallace and Gromit, you know, for the, 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 the stop frame animation. It is so precise. And, the, you know, and, and, and Parks directs so precisely. Every single word is nuanced. You know, he knows exactly what he's doing. And the actor has to fit that vision. So it's a, a different way of working. But with what's happening with games, the, you've got the animation that's followed, you know, you've got some animation that's following the voice. It's kind of voice led. Um, so we had two, two, two things. Is one is getting the actors so they actually flow, so you get this natural subtlety and surprise in performance, so you're not actually just directing it all the time. Um, and the other thing was, yeah, to, to enable that, sorry, to enable that flow, it was trying to stop the director talking. So um, how do you do that? And, it's about, and we thought, yeah, what if? we got the actor to be inside the game. And so we started working at it. And what we do is part of it. I'm just going to show you a little bit. So here we go. Well, this is just, um, I think this is seated. 
to. I think this is the right script. So no, it's not actually. I'm going to close it. It's not going to open. It's not going to work, and it never does. <laughs> you know, because that's the nature of all things. Um, this is what I'm working on. So, standard script, or all the ordinary data. And normally that would be all the actor would be working to. You know, we may have a really good interactive scene where we'll get a number of actors in together to work work together through the scene. But again, it's still text based. And the one thing about video games at the point of creation, you don't have the context. And every other media um, has context. You know, if you're on stage, you're this distance apart you know how it's going to sound. You're going to be doing it so the people in the top top can hear you. That is part of the audience's contract with you, et cetera, et cetera. In film, it's going to be mumbled because it's much closer. And it's, you know, the, all the conventions are there. The sound is there. So the speech levels are, you know, all environmentally um, triggered. So in you know in film TV any kind of environment the actor works every all that information's there it's taken on without even thinking about it if I'm talking like this it doesn't work if I'm doing if I'm talking too loud it breaks the you know the suspension of disbelief the contract is broken with the game scripts if you just got words none of those things that are a given in every other media are absent so you're you none of those things are absent <laughs> none of those things are there. So we simply bring those things into the into the into the fray. So the script is tied to the game assets, and that is you know the magic the way we've been doing with sort of game immersive recording. I'm just going to show you. So anything anything audio or visual is an asset. So so you know here's a, a piece of dialogue. Um, if we're recording individually. The lines are available as they're recorded, so they become a game asset. Once it's created, it's an asset. So what we've done, is we so we edit in real time, so they become assets very quickly. So the editors work upstairs and things stuff down here. So you click on a line, it actually you can play it. So it's not going to play because it's just not going to behave. So, so. Inspector Navek brought me up to speak so, and, and told me about you guys. So you've got this, you know, a scene straight off. You click on a line. Alternative takes are all. There. So, Inspector Nave brought me up to speed and told me about you guys. So if you've got the other actor, they can respond to that. So, but then it's to bring the visual cues in, so what's happening in the scene? So it's, um, we bring in the, um, the scene. They're sitting down outside a calf. Yeah, so it's light conversation like this. So shouting it is, I'm going to throw it. Uh, the other things we can bring in is the character, obviously, who's speaking, so you know. So actually, if you click on a line, you can review, make sure the lines and everything's uh, there. But there's other things that would obviously influence that performance. What's it sound like there? Okay. Um, so, ambient effects. So, the audio tool here uh, has a little bit more to it. So, it's, um, it's got a, a complete sound mixer. So, we can bring in the um, ambient effects, a bit loud, mix it in, so it begins to bring more context. So, Inspector Nave brought me up to speed and told me about you guys. It instantly, you're into the space, and that was the whole thing about you could actually bring this into the, into, you know, into the, at the very point of recording, you're actually in the game space. Um, there's, you know, there's music, obviously, sets emotional tone, sets the whole feel of it. The same thing, it just adds up. So you straight into the scene, and the actor can just enter into the space. That has set a scene, hasn't it? It's there, the scene, there you go. So, Inspector Nave brought me up to speak and told me about you guys. I can guess what he said. I've been tracking a gang of art thieves for some time. This looked like a good lead. But Nave is worse than useless. I'm We're flattered. We're flattered. Just doing our jobs. We all are, or at least trying to. So, maybe we can help each other. 
you know, so you just you're just dropping, you're just going straight into the you're immediately in the game world. So that's fundamentally the core of what we do. It's just any audio asset, any visual asset from the game is available. So. And this is something that's in the actor's booth as well? And they, yeah, this is what the actor sees. Yeah. They get a whole visual array. In Studio T, there's multiple screens, so you can put anything. It can be visual, it can be, you know, a still, it can be rough artwork, if, you know, but a storyboard even. Anything that gives the context. If somebody just did a pencil drawing of this little scene, they know how to perform those lines. You don't need anybody to say, okay, it's a close intimate scene. They go, close intimate scene, and then you open it up and start it, and it becomes a flow. So that is the fundamental of the way, the fund fundamental way that we work. And we've been doing this now for, for properly for a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah a, a few. <laughs> a few years. But it gets more and more sophisticated. And the great thing is with the developers and the publishers that we're actually working with, they're going, I get it. And so it affects their whole pipelines, their processes. When we cast, we cast early, but then we record as late as we can so we can get as many assets in game, ready for the recording. Because once it, the recording happens, you're getting it contextually in game, you don't have to come back and fix, fix it in the mix later in, later on. You know, you don't have to have pickups and all that kind of stuff because you're getting it right at day one. So it's, and you know, going through this this just links to the game assets and wherever the game assets going to be so it's doing a QA of all your assets even at the point of creation it's kind of a you know it's just kind of amorphous um, value-added kind of process that but the, the you know our intention was just give the value added to the, you know the actor so that we could really bring the best out of the actor and bring the performances right down to where they really work Within you know within the context you know so for, you know when you when you were talking about earlier about you don't know how a player is going to move in an environment so you have to make compromises and decisions with voice performance you don't know whether the performance is going to start over there or here but if you know the space you know what those compromises are already so you know that um, you need to pitch it up a little bit and actually. Um, from from study, <laughs> um, it's you basically talk as if you're in a pub, and you're just turning up the background level of the pub, so it's slightly heightened, but not too much. You know, the only scenes where it's close like film is when it's close like film, and they're set. You know, but if you've got an environment where a player walking around who needs to be here, information that's of stuff that's going around him, it needs to be of a certain level. But if you gauge that for every single scene of the, you know, every single environment. You know, where is the, you know, dialogue triggered? So that's why we're really, really interested in talking to the guys and working with the guys who are developing the, the, you know, like Wise, you know, the audio engine and stuff, simply because. It's objects that trigger sound, so and it's proximity, etc., etc. So that information is really actually valuable at the point of creation of dialogue. So. And, and what's the feedback been like from the actors then? I mean, they must. Oh, the actors just—they they fly, they fly in. You know, they just—they come out buzzing, and the developers do as well. It's just that's why we've got so busy. It's because anybody who's come into the environment, they just go, oh, because it is really exciting because you can really play in the environment, and you know what you're taking out is going to work. You know, when we get uh, one of the developers are just a few stops on the tube, um, they come in, they see it all. By the time they're back on the tube, back in the studio, it's on their server ready to go in game. And they know it's right and it's in the right place, named right, etc., etc. And they go, no pain. We can show it to the other guys, you know, just go drop it in game and here, this is what we've just done. And they go, oh wow, and it's that fast, you know. So it's, that is a, one of the other sort of um, benefits. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, so what you imagine is a laser on your nose, and you're just going to go what that way and that way, and then basically I want to see either side of your nose, right? So what I'm going to do is get you to hold the pose, neutral pose. So you hold the pose, go left, go right, and I and, and I'll say great, great, and you can relax. Then we do the next pose. Okay. We're going to go through a whole series of poses. Okay. Okay. 
then she'd have a 3D head and then be something. <laughs> okay, so neutral pose. Okay, uh, left and right. Okay, and perfect. Now, so that is all a 3D image of your head. Now, um, you don't need to go so far less left and right. Okay. It's just literally just, you know, a tiny bit like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. So open your mouth. And left and right. So this is now profiling this. And this would have been, first off, when you normally do it, you'd either put markers on your face or have a camera that's completely set to your face. Like we've got, we've got headsets and stuff with cameras, which we used to have before. Um, but we'll then just work with, with markers. This is a really sort of detailed um, scan of you. So it's now building. Um, a pretty awesome thing. And this is so exciting for me. I love it. And this is going to be sort of really low resolution, what I'm going to show you, but you'll see how yeah. phenomenal this technology is. And it's just going to get better and better. And this is, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, you were pay paying tens of thousands of pounds to get a few minutes of video. Um, with this, it's, you know, for a, for a small indie, they can do all this stuff for a, a few hundred, you know. Wow. And it's just... And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do it, <laughs> you know. And the really sexy thing about this is that it's going to be domestic technology as well. So the new laptops that are coming out will have 3D cameras on them, they can scan you, and you can have fully animated avatars based on whatever. You know, it is, the world is changing. As it always is with games, isn't it? You know, that's another thing I love about games, because you're always um, immersed in new technology. You know, you know what's coming around the corner before anybody else does, it's just... You know, we did a... So here's a little game character. Here we are. That's you. That is a virtual you in the middle there. So we've got this little kid, you know. Um, what I'm going to do is give you another character here. Um, let's go. Let's try an orc. That could be fun. So this is just loading it up, so... But it's great, because that means you can... You know, you're now the character. So... From the, so that... So there. Isn't, isn't that just brilliant? It takes that long. Just think how, hand, how long it would take to hand animate the orc. Uh... <laughs> so we can tweak it a little bit and fine tune it and all that kind of stuff. But we've got actually something that's going on, you see. You see, you've got to be more miserable than that. You look far too cheery. Yeah, there you go. See what I mean? So that, the physicality of the character so influences the performance. So, you know, if he's kind of grumpy, now if he's a, a girl orc, you know, he's going to lift his head up a bit, you know, and it could be a girl. Hi, you know. Hey, just get it. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's straight there. It's changed sex. So we've just written a sketch about a transgender orc. <laughs> So just to demonstrate this tech, but isn't that just... I'm just going to record this, actually, because it's fun. So you can say something, you know. Ah, uh, I am an orc. My best friend is an orc. But we are the last orcs. <laughs> it's kind of, they can overlay this thing, whole thing. So let's just give me... Um, let's take the video off. That's, that's, so that is a that is a complete model of your head there. It's just <laughs> so just ho just hold that pose. Awesome. That's I'll email that to you. Isn't that just <laughs> mind bending? Isn't that just that awesome? It's just like oh my god, I love it. And the great thing is that when you're actually working with that, I know I wouldn't show the animation to the to the actor. So I just get the actor working in the scene, but I'll direct the animation. You know, it's like, you know, he wasn't serious enough. So you naturally just brought your head down and the character took on a complete different dimension. And that is just so 
Wow, I just got, I just got, oh, fuck. <laughs>Ah, uh, you know what? We've just worked on our first 3D dome movie. Do the voices for a 3D dome movie. That was just like, oh fuck. You know, this is, this is, you know, that's the whole thing about doing, you know, like games. You see tech and you see ideas and you see stuff way before it gets to the marketplace. You know, 3D, you know, dome movies are going to be the, are going to be, you're going to see these theatres popping up all over the place in, in the in next couple of years. And it's just like, what the fuck? You know, it's one of those responses. And I think, yeah, yeah, I'd, I would love to have a 3D dome studio. I'd wet myself in joy. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be just so friggin' awesome, yeah.